All right, welcome back. And today we're gonna keep things simple. We're gonna be toning these three JPEGs. And the reason for this is we're gonna be working on destructive editing. Now destructive editing is not something bad. It means whenever you make an adjustment, it automatically applies it to the image. In non-destructive editing, you make a series of layer adjustments and they aren't applied until the end. Today I'm gonna to show you how to make things simple inside of Photoshop and destructive edit these JPEG files. All right, so we are in Bridge and if you've never used Bridge, it's really easy. If you have a folder, you could literally just drop it on top of the Bridge icon and it should open those files and display them. Now I prefer what we call the film strip mode and these are just different ways to view. And so you can see I've got my thumbnails teeny tiny right now, usually I don't, but if you just click on it, that allows you to display or see your image is big. Now what Bridge is great at doing is it lets us cull. So imagine we had 100 images here we're not gonna to tone every single image. Now you can see on this image right here, it has been given five stars. That is what we call culling process. It is really easy to cull. First, if you wanna know what your options are, you can go up here to label. And right here, we've got one star is one. Now there is an option in the preferences that you can change this. It can either be command one or control one on a PC, or just two, three, four, five, just hitting the number. I prefer just the number, not the command key. So I have made sure that I have eliminated that. We can decrease and increase rating, which I do not use. And then you have the option to do colors as well. So we can select no label. Now notice there is not a quick key. And then the colors here are six, seven, eight, nine. And the last one would be no rating. So if you had a star and you wanted to remove it, you would just hit zero and it would remove that. So let's take a look to see what that looks like. I'm just gonna go through with my left hand on the keyboard. I'm gonna hit one. So that's one star you're seeing here. One star here, we'll look up here. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine and the last one's going to be zero and that's just going to remove the stars but not the label remember you have to manually do that so you would go through and select the images that you want so in this case i'll just give this one two stars after you've done that if you just want to see the images that you have you go up here to this little martini glass thing and you would just say hey i want to see anything with one or more stars and then it would isolate just those images that's simply what calling is now, as long as Photoshop is installed on your computer, you should be set up and ready to go. The easiest way to launch into Photoshop is to come down here and just double click. Now note, if you double click up here, you get this little magnification tool. You cannot do it in the large image. You have to do it in the small one. So in this case, we're gonna double click on this image and bam, just like that, it throws it into Photoshop. Now, one thing that you should know before you get started in Photoshop, you do wanna set up Photoshop and more specifically the color settings. So we're gonna drop down here to color settings. And these are the color settings that I suggest for most people. So if you wanna do a screenshot of this, our working space is gonna be Adobe 98. I have switched gray gamma 2.2 and I've changed all these to convert to working. So what that means is these are the color profiles that we wanna use, the color working spaces. And if we get an image that's sRGB, it's going to convert it to the working RGB. Now I have these little boxes ticked. So when it does that, it will say, hey, do you want to convert to the working RGB? Because sometimes there are cases where I don't. But in most cases, I'm gonna hit yes and let it open up. So that's the reason for this particular setup. You don't have to worry about anything over here. It's just right here. In this case, I've changed Adobe, I've changed gray. We, I'm not working in CMYK, so I don't really care about it. I've changed all these to convert, which they're not by default, and I've ticked this box and this box. You wanna do that before you open up the image, however. All right, so we have this image, and this is gonna be something pretty typical. In photography, when you are shooting JPEG, it is pertinent that you get 
your color balance or white balance as accurate as possible. Unlike RAW, where you can switch it after the fact, with a JPEG image, you are stuck with how you photographed it. Any issues that you had, you can't change until you get to Photoshop. In this image, it's a little bit warm. Now, it's okay to have an image that's a little on the warm side, but in this case, I'm gonna show you how to, but in this case, I'm gonna show you how to change the color of this image. And strangely enough, we're not gonna do it in Photoshop. To change the white balance of this image, we're gonna do something. We're actually gonna go backwards into Adobe Camera Raw. Now, Adobe Camera Raw is a raw conversion file. So if you are shooting raw files, this is gonna be something that you use in between of Bridge and Photoshop to convert your raw file to a regular file. So in this case, we're gonna use this because it has better color balancing tools that are made simple. It's really easy, you're gonna go up here to File, you're gonna drop down to Camera Raw Filter, and it's gonna load this photo into Camera Raw. Now right over here, we don't have the full set of options, but notice we have white balance as shot, auto, and custom. Auto is going to automatically try and color balance, and you can see it did a lot better. It might be a little bit on the blue side, but the cool thing is, and this is where custom comes in, once you start sliding these sliders, this auto is gonna switch from auto to custom. So you can see auto to custom. But what this allows you to do is kind of fine tune it. So this is going in the Kelvin temperature scale, but if you go this way, it's gonna make it cooler, and this way, it's gonna make it warmer. Now, most of your adjustments when using white balance are gonna be in this temperature range. You rarely are using tint. So what we'll do is just warm this image up a little bit, but not so it's so cool. And I'm gonna go ahead and just leave that tint there. And then once I'm done, I'm gonna hit OK. And you can see we're right back into Photoshop. Now this is where the destructive toning comes in and people get all worried because it's a horrible sounding word, but it's not. All it means is it applied that to the image. Before we move on, I want to explain a few things on my screen so that they don't get confused. My screen is set up custom. It might vary or look a little bit different than yours. The first one is gonna be this toolbar over here. You are going to have the toolbar but you're gonna have a lot of items that look just like this, where you have that little arrow. That arrow means that there are other tools nested below it. So you'll see I don't have as many, and that is because I have taken them out, and I have all the tools that I regularly use out in front of me, and then I have tools that I don't use a lot nested still. And I've also deleted some tools that I don't use. I can get to them by clicking on this little button right here, and it will bring up all the tools that are available. The second thing that I have done is I have a custom screen set up. Over here we have panels or palettes, whatever you wanna call them, it doesn't make a difference. And then right up here, you'll notice that I have a custom setup. For a photographer, I would suggest that you pick photography. That's gonna get you in the ballpark. But in my case, I have a custom setup. For this tutorial, we are not gonna be using a lot of this information over here, so don't get too worried by it. The key one that we want that most likely is not gonna be up is gonna be your info palette. So the info palette is important. With the info palette, it does not come set up like this. So you notice I have RGB and K. K stands for black, so what that's reading is the amount of black or gray in my image. This is the key one for what I'm gonna be doing. To change these, you just click on the eyedropper and then you can select whatever you want. So you can see right here, I wanted gray. There's the gray scale, I can pick that. So in my case, I want RGB because we are working up here as you can see in RGB. And I want K because I want to be able to read the whites in my image. The other tool that might be helpful for you is the history tool. Now, if the tools are not available, you can always come up to window and drop down. Anything with a tick is gonna make it available. Now in my case, I do have it available, it's just closed at this point. So if I wanted the history, all I need to do is click that and it's gonna open. This is going to allow you to go back in time. So if I wanted to go back on my image to where I opened it, you can see that's what it looks like. If I go back to the brush tool, then I can see how, what I've done and how I've changed it. 
Now there are more options under the history tool, but we are not gonna talk about those right now. So I'm gonna go ahead, if I click this little double arrow that we see right here, I can close that window back in so it doesn't take up as much space. If you were working on a laptop, unlike me, space is gonna be important for you. So the next thing that we're gonna do is we are gonna make what's called a global adjustment if need be. A global adjustment means an adjustment that affects every single pixel in the whole image. Adjustments can be made by going to image, adjustment, and then you can see right here, we've got a whole bunch of different things that we can do. You will notice that only a few have quick keys. So we have levels, curves, hue saturation, color balance, black and white, invert, and desaturate. Why do those have quick keys and the other ones don't? Well, because those are the ones that are most commonly used. I'm gonna suggest in this class for making brightness and contrast adjustments, you either use curves or levels. In the beginning, I think a lot of people tend to use levels. However, most professionals actually use curves. The reason is, is because it does everything levels does plus more. In this class, I'm gonna be showing how to use curves because I think it's a far superior adjustment than levels. Look, in photography, there's a lot of different ways to do the same thing. You can see right here, we've got brightness, contrast, levels, curves, and exposure, all basically doing sort of the same thing. But there's always one way that's better. You don't need to use every single different method. You're best off picking one and getting really good at it than knowing how to do each one of the ones. So we're gonna go ahead and pick curves. So let's go ahead and take a look at the panel. So the first thing that we see here is this is our gonna be our curve, and we're gonna use that with this line. So this line has a point here, this is your highlights, and then it goes down here, and this is the shadow. So you can see shadow, highlight on this little grayscale bar. You can also slide these sliders to move this point horizontally. Same thing with this one, this is gonna add more contrast, so you can slide that right there. You can grab this point at any point, and I'll say lift up. It doesn't mean that you're going this way. It means you're going like at a 45 degree angle. Lifting up is going this direction. Going down is going in this direction. If you've set a point and you don't want it, you just select it and hit delete, and it's gonna be gone. There's also a different way to kind of throw it, but it's a little bit more complicated to use. For right now, just delete it. One important aspect is, you must, and I, let me stress this, you must be on light from zero to 255. That is how you work in RGB. Pigment ink is for CMYK. Note, we are working in RGB over here, not CMYK. So you should never, ever tone a photo in CMYK. Everything over here, this is just what we wanna see. Do we wanna see the histogram or not see the histogram? It's just the way it's configured. Right here, we have something called show clipping. And so what show clipping means is areas where you're losing information. In this case, this red means that it's a little bit too dark. It's just gotten too dark. Let me blow something out. So we'll blow out those highlights. We'll turn the show clipping back on. And now you can see it's showing us those areas. This isn't something that I tend to use, but I'll show you how to use it here in a little bit. So we're gonna go ahead and turn that off and slide this back over. La next thing that we have down here are some eyedroppers. The first one is to set a white point. The second one is to set gray. Now, the reason you would set gray is to color balance, but I found it doesn't really work really good. Maybe it's good for graphic design, but photography, this doesn't work really well because you need to make sure that you would have something that's pure white or realistically a neutral gray. And I'll show you how to know if something is a neutral gray by looking at that info palette here in a second. And then we have our black point. So the idea and how this works is for black, you would come over here, click and set a black. And then for white, you come over here and find a bright white. In this case, this white actually might work because it is a, a white without detail. But if you set something with a white with detail, it's gonna end up overexposing it. But you can see I've already set white and black and this image looks absolutely horrible. Now I'm on a calibrated monitor, 
This is important because I'm calibrating to a standard to ensure that the what I see is accurate. If you don't have a calibrated monitor, a lot of what you see might not be accurate. Now to reset this, I'm gonna hold the Alt or Option key. Notice I get our reset button right here and that will let it go back to the beginning. We also have this little hand thingamajigger here. Can't remember what it's called, but what it allows you to do is go into the image and adjust it. So if I click it, I can go in and pick a point. So let's say I pick this dark. I can click and I can drag down or I can drag up. And what it does, all values in the image that are like this, it will adjust them. It's really just adjusting the curve just like I could do before but it's just doing it in a little bit simpler and different method. I do not use it, I'm not a big fan of it. I don't really see its value. We also have an auto setting. An auto is going to automatically set a black and automatically set a white and then make adjustments from there on what it thinks looks good. Sometimes auto actually does work, but by and large, I would say I am not a fan of the auto setting. So I'll click it and you can see it barely did anything so we are pretty accurate as far as auto goes here in this image. Let me show you how to use the curve to make an adjustment. First of all, we are in RGB, meaning every single channel is going to be adjusted here. And this is typically how you work. You can go into the individual colors and adjust them. Typically that's done for color correction, not brightness and contrast. So the way this works is if you go to the left, you are making your whites brighter. You're increasing your highlights. If you go down, you're adding gray or darkening your highlight areas. If you go to the right, you're increasing the contrast or black point. And if you go up, you're flattening out your image or adding less contrast to your shadows or black areas. Now you can grab this anywhere here. So if I was to grab this and make an adjustment by going up, what I'm doing is I'm brightening more of my highlight values and then the curve slowly goes back down. And what you would do by a curve is you can set a second point. Now you can say, hey, just from the basic mid-tones to the highlights, I wanna brighten those, but I don't wanna affect the shadows. Or you could do the opposite where you brighten your shadows and you don't do anything to your highlights. Now, a lot of people come in here and try to microtone where they have all these little points like this. Yeah, that's not something you wanna do. Normally when you're toning, you just wanna keep this a simple, smooth curve. So you're gonna just make a few points in here to make sort of an S curve. That is most likely going to be your best option. Now, when making a global adjustment, you don't want to make an adjustment to make her look good, but to make another area look bad. If that's the case, you don't need to make a global adjustment. A global adjustment should only be made to make the whole image look better because we can make selective adjustments where we go into very specific areas. In this video, I'm not gonna go into how to read a histogram. All I'm gonna tell you in this video is this is where the data is. There's a lot in the shadows and then it severely falls off and goes into the highlights. The reason of this is because people were wearing dark clothing, it's at night, and there's a lot of dark areas in this image. In this case, I don't think I need to make a global adjustment. If I did, it would just be to lighten the blacks in the area here, but I think I'm gonna do that as a selective adjustment. So in this case, I'm actually not going to make an adjustment here. Now, usually when you're working in Photoshop, if you have an area, you can see right here, there's really no data. You wanna optimize your image and slide this over. In this case, I don't think we're gonna do this because I don't think it's gonna help because we actually do have this spike here where there is some image. But if this just fell off and there was nothing, you would usually wanna slide these over to where the histogram starts. I don't usually go right to the beginning, but really close to it. The problem with toning is a lot of things are experience and it will take you time to understand why I'm telling you to do that. So we're gonna go ahead and hit cancel because we're not gonna make any adjustments. The adjustments we're gonna make are gonna be really easy. In journalism, what you're trying to do is replicate what you would have done in the darkroom. 
the reason for using destructive toning is we're just going to basically be lightening and darkening areas just like we would have done in the dark room. That is what's ethical in photojournalism. So in this case, we're going to go ahead and we're going to use the, the lasso here. We're going to click on that button. Notice that a little window pops up whenever you hover over it and it's telling you the quick key to get to the lasso is the letter L. If you hit L on your keyboard, it will go to the lasso. Now the key thing here with using the lasso is gonna be called your feather. Now there's a couple different ways to feather an image, but we're just gonna use the feather. And I will show you why you wanna use the feather. So I'm gonna go ahead and circle them. And notice I do not have a feather on. So I'm gonna hit Command M and I'm gonna lighten, I'll darken them a lot just so you can see this. Now obviously this is not a good adjustment, but I want you to see what's happening. So I'm gonna just hit okay and then look, and you can see there's this nasty hard edge. No matter what you would do, this would never look good. Why? Because you have a feather of zero. Feather means when you make a selection, from this point out, how many pixels does it feather the image out? And feather means if you think of everything in this circle as done 100% of the adjustment I just made, then it goes to 90 to 80 to 70 and it feathers it the percentage of that adjustment out so it blends into the photograph let's go ahead and go back in time now going back in time is the quick key of command or control z and each time i hit it it's just like using your history tool it's just like using the history and you'll see it up here i'm going back in time until I get somewhere. You could come up and select and hit the history tool. So this time we're gonna go ahead and change the feather and we will do 55 and then I'll make that same adjustment and then our thing and we'll darken this. And it's still not gonna look good, but you can see now we don't have that hard edge. Well, why? Because it feathered it out. So the question is gonna be, well, how much do you feather? In the beginning, you're just gonna have to kind of listen to me or test and try things out. I usually do the same number just because it's easier and quicker to hit 55 versus hit 59. And is there a difference between 55 and 59? Not really. So feather works like this. The larger the area that you're selecting, the higher your feather, the smaller the area that you're selecting, the smaller feather. And I'll show you what I mean by that. I'm gonna try to circle her nose and notice I get this little disclaimer window. It says the pixels are more than 50% selected. And what that means is it's too small of an area with that feather, it wouldn't work. So if I lowered this to 11 and then I came in here, it will allow me to select that nose out. So the smaller the area, you have to lower your feather. This takes a little bit of thinking in the beginning because you're you set this and then you forget about it. But in general, I usually do around 55 to 77 is a good average feather. So in this case, we'll just go ahead and do 55 again. And what I'm gonna do here is I'm going to start making some selective adjustments. So I'm gonna close this just to hide it. And remember our first one is, this is just getting a little black. So I'm gonna crudely select this area. I'm gonna hit Command M, which is the quick key for curves. And I'm just gonna lower that contrast a little bit. Now you'll see this is gradated a little bit where it kind of goes from more of it to less of it. And we're gonna do a little bit less than that. We're just gonna do a little bit here. And I, look, if I wanted to come in here and do it again into this area, I could once again, I could come in here and I could lower that out, even it out. And then if I wanted to do this same area right here, I could select that area and I could come in here and do this area. We're gonna hit OK, or let's go into our history. We're gonna go back in time. And I'm gonna do something a little bit different. So in this image, remember I selected this area, but then I also wanted to select this area. So you'll notice that when I make a selection and then I go make another selection, it deselects that area that I had over there on the left. So to add to a selection, the quickest and best way, and, and look, you can click on these buttons up here. So up here we have some buttons. It's add to selection, subtract to a selection, and then intersect with selection. 
you could come up here and click add to a selection, but I'm gonna teach you something. Photoshop is about quick keys. It's speed and efficiency. All the quick keys you need basically are on the left side of your keyboard. So I'm gonna use my left hand to hold the shift button. And when I do that, you'll notice that next to my cursor gets a little plus icon. If I hold the alt or option key, it's gonna be a minus, so it's gonna be subtracting. So I could subtract, or I can hold shift and add. I can also add to a different location. So I could do multiples. I can adding if I wanna add. Then when I hit command M, I could come in here and lower that contrast a little bit in my shadow areas and apply it evenly to all these selected areas. Now in this image, his head is a little bit washed out. So what if I want to add a little contrast or get rid of some of that area that's washed out, I can make that selection, Command M to bring up my curves, and to increase the contrast, you're just gonna go this way and I can increase that contrast. All right, so then we can come in and let's say I want to select this whole area. Look, you don't have to always be super accurate, but pretty close. So we're gonna select that area. I'm gonna hit Command M once again, and I'm gonna open that area up just a little bit. So we're just opening that area up. I'm gonna hit OK. And just like that, I've made adjustments to this image. Now there's more I could do if I wanted to come up here and see what it would look like if I added contrast or I darkened this area. I can come here and I can darken this a little bit. I can also add some contrast. So if I wanted to knock that down so it wasn't so glowing white there, there's lots of stuff that you can do. I'm just trying to keep things simple. I'm more into showing you how things work than how to accurately tone. The next options that we have, if we come up here to image, adjust, we have, these are our brightness, but now we have some color adjustments. So let's go to color balance. Color balance is really simple. However, we did a lot of this in Adobe Camera Raw. This is going to allow you to adjust the either cyan or reds to magenta or green, yellow or blues, and you can do that in the shadows, midtones, or highlights. Look, if you do it in the midtones, it doesn't mean it's only going to be in the midtones. It's going to give more in the midtones. So in this case, let's say I want to go to my shadows and take out some of this yellowish red. I can dial that back and I can dial that back. And just like that, I've gotten rid of some of that nasty yellowish color in my shadows. I can hit OK and it applies it. Remember, destructive toning, each time you make an adjustment, it's reconfiguring the data because it's applying it to your image. All right, so this looks pretty good. We're going to go up here to Image, Adjust. And the last thing that we're going to pay attention to is Hue Saturation. Strangely enough, this is my favorite tool for adjusting color in Photoshop. So we're gonna go ahead and hit that. The command key is Command U. And I'll bring this over here. Now, usually when I do this, I am not working in master. One of the issues that you run into Photoshop is remember it's taking a black and white image and it's interpreting what the color should be. So sometimes it gets it right and sometimes it doesn't get it right. Or sometimes the color is just oversaturated. So in this area right here, we could say maybe it's a little oversaturated red and yellow. If we wanted to adjust that, we would go into the color that we find to be the issue. So if it is red, we would go into red. Hue is the color, meaning we are changing the color of that color. Of the red in the image, we're gonna change it. Remember, right now it's happening everywhere because we don't have a selection made. If I didn't want it to happen everywhere, I would need to make a selection first and then do hue saturation. So if I come in here, notice I can change the color of the reds. Look at all the people and they're changing the color of the reds. So I'm gonna hit cancel. In this case, we're gonna go ahead and I'm just gonna circle this area because this is the area that I wanna make that adjustment in. And hit command U to bring up that hue saturation. Remember, we're gonna go to reds. So if I want my reds to be a little bit more yellow, I could make them go this way to match the yellow so they're not so intense. Or if I wanna reduce the amount of red in the image, I can desaturate it. Look, you don't wanna to do too much or the people are gonna look like they're dead. This is, needs to be a small adjustment, not a large adjustment. 
Lightness means the brightness or darkness of that color. So if I wanted to make the reds brighter, I could make them brighter. If I want to make them darker, I could make them darker. In this case, I think it actually does help a little bit to either make it darker or lighter because what it does is it's flattening it out a little bit. Now, if I want to go into my yellows, I drop down into yellow. Most photos are made up of red and yellow. That's going to be the colors that you run into. Now, in black areas outdoors, you might run into cyans and blues. But for right now, we're going to mostly be dealing with reds and yellows because when you're dealing with people, those are usually the colors that are difficult to deal with. I'm actually going to hit OK because I might want to affect the yellow of the whole image. So I'm going to hit Command U and this is going to be a global adjustment and we're going to go into the yellows. To change the color of your yellow, you can either go this way, it's going to make it more red or more green. We're not going to do that. To decrease the saturation of the yellow, which is what I want to do, I'm just going to desaturate it, go this way. And if I want to make my yellows a little bit brighter or darker, I can change that here. Usually when you're doing these are slight adjustments, you're not like going like, woo, yay, I could suck all the yellow out. We don't want to make it unrealistic. Remember, we're trying to make small adjustments like we would be able to in a dark room. In a dark room, we would make small color adjustments to get the color more accurate. So we're going to go ahead and hit OK and say that's it. Basically pretty good. This image is looking pretty good to me visually. So how do I know if it is accurate? Now, this is the difficult part for people learning photography. They see something, but they don't always know if it looks good or if it's too contrasty or too bright. One thing that can really help you is this little info palette over here. We've got the pointer and what I'm going to be looking at is this K value. So if I come over here to his collar and I read that, it's saying it's at 12%. So I'm looking for the brightest area on there. So as I move this, it looks like I got a nine, but basically a nine or a 10 is the brightest area. If I go up here to the light bulb, notice it's at zero. Now that's okay because these light bulbs should be blown out in this image. To hold white detail, you need to be at least at one or two percent. So if you go over a white and it reads it at zero, that means there's no detail or any gray left in that image. It's pure, pure white. You do not usually want this. Your eye in photography goes to the whitest area of the image just by default. And holding highlight detail is important. So by toning and not going above 2% or knowing what color whites should be is going to help you more accurately tone. So this is saying right now that we're at about 10%. I think I could go a little bit brighter. Let's go ahead and hit Command M and I'm going to show you how this works. I'm going to make a large adjustment. Now, when I go over the area, you're going to see back over there by K, it says 13, but now it's at two. So what that's saying is with the adjustment that I made up in the curve, it was at 13% K value and now it's at two. So I can read that so I don't go too far. I can make this adjustment. In this case, I don't want it to be two or that bright. I think we could probably do seven. That looks pretty good. I'm going to go ahead and hit OK. Same thing with the black areas. I can read my black areas. Usually you want to go up to around 95%. You don't need to go higher than 95% or it tends to get too dark and too contrasty. Most printers can't print at that value anyways. The last thing you would do, and in this image, because it's nighttime, it's not going to give us a good value. But depending on people's skin color, you can hover over their faces and tone by skin color. So if this was a a bright sunny day, she might be around 30%. This guy who's much whiter, he might be around 20% gray in an image. Now, next to that, we have the red, green, and blue. And so this is reading the color in the image. So let's go over to the white because I think that's going to make the most difference. If you notice, we've got 236, 238, 233. Now, if all three of those numbers were the same, meaning if they were 236, 236, 236, that would mean that this is a neutral gray. A neutral gray would be basically a gray that has no color into it. It's perfectly neutral gray. You're very rarely going to find that in an image, even if we go up here where it's blown out. It is the only reason we're getting 255 is because there's nothing available. What we can do is we can tell colors by reading an area. 
and seeing what they are. So in this one, the red is really high. It's at 196, 158, 125. And from this, I can tell this image is really warm. Down here, I'm reading in the, in the blue is really low, meaning it's a little bit warm or yellowish. You can learn to adjust color by doing this. Now, an image shot at night is gonna have all kinds of issues. You're not gonna get as accurate to a neutral color reading at night as you would during the daytime. So for this video, we're gonna go ahead and we'll just take a look at this image and this looks like it's done pretty well. On the image before, which was this one, I launched it by double clicking it. You can launch from Photoshop without using Bridge and it's really simple. You would just go File, Open, and then you would navigate. So in this case, I've got this folder and I would navigate and I can click on this image here and then I can say Open. I could also take that file and just drop it right onto the Photoshop icon right here, and it would open just like it did before. Now in this image that we have here, this is gonna be really easy to tone, and that's a good thing. The less you have to do to it, the better. In photography, we're trying to take the photographs as accurate as possible, not to use Photoshop to make these amazing adjustments. Now on this image, I'll do this both using levels and curves, so you can see the difference between the two. My suggestion is pick one and use it. In this image, it's a little flat. I think we could open this up a little bit and just shift the color and we're gonna be pretty good. So the first thing we're gonna do is that color shift. Now to get to color balance, that is Command or Control B, as in boy. And I brings up color balance. Remember those are up here, image adjust, and it will get color balance. Now we're gonna be using the midtones here. Remember I said it looks a little magenta, so I'm gonna go this way to dial that out. And we're just gonna do a small adjustment. Two might even be too much. Let's take a little red out. Now look, this is the way I see the image. You might have four people up here. Some people are gonna want it cooler. Some people are gonna want it warmer. And as a photographer, I didn't take this image. I don't remember what this looked like when I took it because I didn't take this photo. This was just something that I downloaded and is easy for me to do a tutorial on on the internet. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit okay, just making those small adjustments right there. I can always come back and make more adjustments later if need be. To get levels, I would go image, adjustments, levels, which is command or control L. The reason I'm doing command or control, command is for Mac, control is for PC. Just a little disclaimer, I have worked on Macs only for over 30 years, so I'm really good with their quick keys. I know most of the PCs, but occasionally I run into some where I'm not sure. All right, so we can see right here, here's that histogram inside the levels, and notice there's that big gap. Look, if I slide this over to optimize this image, it's going to be brightening the image. Now, I don't wanna go all the way over, because sometimes what can happen is there is no white point and it can make images too bright. So I will usually just back it off a teeny tiny bit. This is called optimizing your histogram. So when I would hit OK, and then I'll go back into levels, which is Command L, notice now the histogram goes from basically one side to the other. Doesn't go over there perfectly because I backed it off. Right here, this is actually your gamma, but you're gonna think of it as your midtones. So as you slide this this way, it makes your midtone areas brighter. And if you go to the right, it makes them darker. This right here is your black point or your shadow area, so it's making your darks darker. Down here is contrast, so it's making your shadows flatter. And down here, it's darkening your whites. In this case, all I really needed to do was open up my midtones a little bit and slide that over to get my highlights where it is. And I think this image looks pretty good. Notice I'm not using these eyedroppers, I rarely ever use them. So this looks pretty good. It could be a little bit yellow. I'm looking at this road here. I'm not positive. So what I'll do is I'll do a command U and I'm gonna do the shadow or This could be in the shadows or it could be in the midtones, but we'll see here. So uh, yeah, that is affecting it. We're gonna go ahead and do like a my, plus two. That's gonna make that a little bit bluer. I think I like that. Remember, it did affect this whole area. I'm gonna hit Command-Z to undo that. If I just wanted it to affect this area here, remember I can take 
that lasso, I can select just the road. And now I can do that color balance tool. I can take just the yellow out of the road because I'm saying, hey, no, no, no. I don't want it to happen everywhere, just in the road. Just like that, this image is done. And this last image will open a completely different way. So I've got that folder open. I can take this file and I can just drag it over here on the Photoshop and boom, just like that, it's opening this file up. Now I can tell the color on this image is very warm, but we have to remember we're using stage lights at a concert. So it could be that this is what this should look like. If you wanted a more neutral balance, once again, we would go up here to camera raw filter. Now you wouldn't want to select this here because this would just apply the last time we used it, which might not be the correct setting for this. So we're going to go camera raw filter. And then when this comes up, we can do as shot and auto and we can see, woo, really bad. Doesn't look good. So we can go back to as shot. So this is where manually adjusting this. So I'm just going to dial a little bit out of it. Now there are adjustments here if you wanted to do some exposure, contrast and highlights. So if I wanted to come in here and adjust this, I could. Remember, when you make these adjustments, they're affecting everywhere. So don't do it if it's gonna make this area too bright. So we're just gonna go ahead and hit okay. Yes, there are some selective adjustments, but we're not gonna get into them. So we're just gonna go ahead and hit okay and bring this back. And now from here, I can start making those adjustments that I see in the image. So the first thing that I have is Command M to bring up my curves. And the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm looking at my histogram. Notice my histogram is really strong in the black. That's because of this area here, but it does go the whole way through. So I don't need to optimize. So I could open up or flatten out my blacks a little bit. Remember, if I wanna read them, I can read them. I went from 95 to 92. I don't think we need to go that much, but that looks better. That opened that image up a little bit. So I could say that looks pretty good. Now, if I wanna brighten his face up a little bit, remember I'm just gonna go ahead and select the area. Maybe we'll just do his whole neck and face right there. Make sure we get his ear. Remember, the Option or Alt key gives you the minus, so to select, when you select, you need to make a full circle. You can't just like draw a line through it because it doesn't know what to do. You have to say, hey, this whole area I want to select. Or if you're shifting, you can say, I want this whole area to be selected. I'm gonna hit Command M, Let's go into my midtones, brighten this area up a little bit. Now, this is where using the curves and adjusting for color can be helpful. I'm gonna go ahead and drop down to the red. So in the red channel, if I move up, it makes it more red or more blue. In this case, I wanna take a little bit of that red out, so I'm just gonna move this down and that's going to help color correct this area just a little bit and then i'll hit okay now if i wanted to darken this area here i could just take this and make a selection around that part of the guitar command m and i can darken that and basically you would just go through your image doing this process until you get it looking how you want that is basically how you destructive edit inside of Photoshop. Don't forget to learn to use this info palette. It's the key. I use it every day for just about every single image that I tone. Even though my monitor is calibrated, this really helps me get an image exactly where it should be. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to give me a thumbs up. If you have any comments or questions, you can leave those below. And as always, don't forget to subscribe.